Man, I thought it was a headache putting our events together. But this right here, this was crazy. There was an idea, an honest ambition of a chosen few that was dreamt up at a dinner table. If you build it, you will come. Type stuff, right? So you had the Black Geeks, which is Robert Butler and his staff, including Rob, who handled logistics, um, and uh, Peter Austin, and then you had Jamie Broadnax, the powerful or powerhouse blogger and overall social media superstar. Chauncey, who served as the assistant project manager and coordinator, and Aries, who handled the special events and planning. So the dinner table talk became slowly but surely a movement, you know, an ideal, an ambition of this, shall we say, board of directors. Um, it eventually became known as Universal Fan Con, and they wanted to create something special. I was actually having a talk with somebody earlier today about the idea of inclusion. You know, when you want something to be special and something that everybody can enjoy, but you can sometimes give people the impression that the event you're throwing is only for a specific type of person. And sometimes you wanna put emphasis on a particular group or social uh, group or whatever without excluding everybody else. And other times people do. Sometimes, you know, I mean, you don't see any a lot of black dudes in the KKK. <laughs> you know what I mean? You, you get what I'm saying? You have groups like that and you have groups that are like, yo, we're throwing a convention uh, for you know people with three years but it's okay if you come and you don't have three years you know what I'm saying we'll take care of you if you don't have three years but if you don't have three years it's all good you know what I mean so I guess the biggest thing to keep in mind with Universal Fan Con was their intention on building a an event around the LGBT community disabled persons and people of color and sort of you know circling the wagons and saying all right we're gonna celebrate us if nobody else will I guess type of deal which is you know I like that idea I like the idea of why not we why not just do it ourselves you know we'll if we build it somebody will come you know at least that was their thought process at the time and to be honest can't fault them on that you know, what I think is interesting is that they went about it the right way, at least on the surface. You know, they even had their risks and challenges on their Kickstarter page, um, you know, and, and it, with planning any event, let alone a large scale undertaking like a con. There are always things that can go wrong or, or at the bare minimum, not as expected. We all know that. Another limitation of first year cons is an inability to attract talent based on size and budget. Fortunately for us, and this is what I think is interesting and key, and I guess the the board of directors behind Universal Fan Con, their perception of themselves, I feel like was a part of what led to uh, the event's ultimate failure. And they said, we have a large team with years of industry experience and personal relationships that are being leveraged in order to make this project a success. Now, having a lot of experience as either a guest or a blogger or, you know, someone that's in the industry doing industry things is, is not the same as having success with an event. Um, we'll get into the details in terms of when people were brought on and, and who, you know, put money into what and who, you know, sort of didn't do anything or maybe didn't do anything quick enough that sort of thing we'll get into all that you know a little later in the video but it's a different beast it's a different animal you know 
um, as I mentioned before in the video, like right now I'm involved in some some big things and it's it's not the same as podcasting. I've, I've been podcasting uh, since 2008 and uh, September 9th, I believe, 2008. I actually went I went back and listened to my first episode. I sounded terrible. <laughs> OK, welcome to the show, guys. This is Otakacast. I probably said that wrong, but bear with me. This is new. But, you know, about 10 years ago. And I can do this in my sleep. You know, I, I can sit down, press record, and take a nap. All right? But sitting down and with a notepad and journal and going, okay, we want to put on an event for us people. You know, we want people to come to this thing. We want it to be a good turnout. But we want to make sure that they come, uh, that if they do come, we have the things that they want to see, you know? And then you got to take into account budgets and sponsorships and locations and food and beverage minimums and things I don't like talking about because they make me nervous, but it's all good. And, and, that's, and you know, they, they dealt with that same issue. And to their credit, they didn't back down. They saw their dream and they went with it. And, you know, and I, I just feel like there was a few things they could have done differently that would have maybe given them a better result, you know, and. I guess my point is that they didn't have a lot of con running experience, even after they brought on a couple of people uh, that we'll go into here. As a matter of fact, let's go ahead and uh, get into it, shall we? Oh, we are so close, so close, ladies and gentlemen. The next crew store is on its way. It's not quite here yet, but stay tuned. Facebook.com slash the next crew. All right, so let's get into this story here. The rise and fall of Universal Fan Con, all right? Okay, so this con, Universal Fan Con, was supposed to be a space, you know, that represented everybody. So how did they go from this huge ideal and ambition to postponing a week before it was supposed to go off? Well, let's take a look. Things started off pretty well, actually. Their Kickstarter received over a thousand backers. This ultimately turned out fifty-six thousand four hundred ninety-eight bucks. That's impressive for anyone looking to start a brand new convention. I don't care who you are, but not this board of directors, right? They were special, and they needed way more than a thousand people backing this thing. And keep in mind, not Robert his crew or Jamie have any experience starting a con from the logistics of it all the organizing they're operating in the dark with all of this blind leading the blind however you want to spin that analogy this group were not experienced at all in terms of running a convention something that ultimately ends up being their downfall along with some financial issues we'll see here feeling like they have the support of the fans they were shooting for 10,000, 10,000, your first con ever. They were shooting big. They weren't just aiming for, you know, oh, a little nice, you know, get together of like-minded, maybe 100, 150, maybe even 300. They they were, they went for the top. Um, You know, I don't know if that's reasonable or not. <clears throat> I mean, not only is our community already niche, Add on to the fact that you're throwing in a convention for people of color niche. It is, because we're, we're dealing with that right now. And then you also throw on top of that something that is focused around uh, people with disabilities niche and LGBT community niche. Um, so that's to, to go for 10,000 within the demographic being the way it is, is really bold. Um, hindsight, obviously, you know, looking back on it. With all that being said, this mean, green, inexperienced machine kept chugging right on along, uh, right off the tracks, as a matter of fact, as we'll see here. Robert and the crew, and uh, Jamie, you know, Austin, Rob, Peter, those guys, did the legwork of organizing the convention, and Miss Broadnax used her renown within the community to get fans and celebrities alike excited about their whole movement that according to vulture.com's article and it looked like it was working it looked like they could get 
you know, big name guests and in, including Orlando Jones, Billy D. Williams, and Greg Pack. Everything seemed to be going well, at least on the outside looking in. Let's stop right there. So before I go any further, I want to make it very clear the mission of the safe space and my intentions. I want to point out issues in the community. Obviously, you know, there'll be videos about, you know, people who are deemed problems or toxic or whatever, what have you. But something like Universal Fan Con, I don't feel like I need to, you know, demonize Robert or Jamie or any of these people because their intentions, obviously, from the very beginning, seemed like they were, you know, good. Uh, for those of you who don't really know Robert Butler, he did an interview uh, maybe like a week before everything shut down. And he kind of gives his intentions and hit, and the ambition of what uh, Universal Fan Con was supposed to be about. Now, to be fair, he did give this interview like a week before, and he probably at this point knew that it wasn't going to be pulled off. So <laughs> on that note, it's kind of like, eh, this is kind of awkward, but but just just listen, just listen. Check this out. All right, man, we got a uh, special guest in the building, man. Uh, love to talk nerd talk. Love to have people in here to kind of indulge in our in our ignorance, as, as, right, right. as we like to say, man. Give it up for Robert Butler's in the no building, doubt, man. No doubt, no doubt, no doubt. Robert Butler's here, man. He's the president and executive director of FanCon. Yeah. FanCon is coming up soon. Um, Want to learn all about this thing, man. This is, this is a, a really interesting event you got going on. So just tell the people about FanCon. What is that? So Universal Fan Con is a first year convention coming to Baltimore Convention Center April 27th through 29th. And the uh, basis of this convention is we diverse and inclusive uh, for different nerds who've always gone to these other events and just felt like there wasn't a place for them. Mm -hmm. So we wanted to make sure that there was an entire convention that took those particular marginalized uh, communities' needs and focused in it on the programming and different little things like um, the event itself, the guests, and just be like, you know what? We're not trying to outdo any other convention, but we hear you. We're fans ourselves, and we want to make sure that what we've been wanting is reflected in an event that we can go to. That's amazing. That is amazing. Wow. And, 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 you know, we, we, we had a show last year. Um, it actually turned out to be like a, almost like a mini documentary about right. birds. And um, shout out to all the birds. Shout out to the folks from Lotus Next. Shout out to Ashley um, and, and her crew that came through. Um, and, and, yeah, Midori. Yeah. And, and it, it, was, it was a dope show. But it was more about the individual and, and the individual that's into, uh, you know, I guess we call it nerd culture, mm -hmm. comic, co comic book culture, video game culture, whatever. Mm -hmm. Um, and how sometimes they feel isolated at certain events, how they go to these cons and, you know, they feel alone. Um, you know, the, the, the idea of having a con that's exclusive, just talk to me about like the, I, where that idea sparked from and then also how in, 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 inclusive is it, right? Because it's, it can't just be about just like only black folks, right? It's mm -hmm. about other, other people. So just talk to me about like the struggle of putting together an event like this. Well, you know, um, a lot of people that's part of the fan con, uh, family team, we're also uh, podcasters, bloggers, writers who had been advocating in nerd culture, blurred culture for many years about some of the issues we see in the fan space and particularly uh, at fandom events where it's like um, most of these larger conventions, other conventions, they have what we all you know, jokingly say is the diversity panel, mm. which is normally this one panel, maybe it's two. Uh, and the whole weekend where they talk about issues in comic, movie, television, about diversity. And that's the time everybody kind of get to complain about you don't see enough of us. Mm -hmm. But that's it. So it's kind of mm -hmm. like, yeah, these events um, are diverse. But being diverse just means having a bunch of different people there. 
inclusive is making pe- sure people feel welcome there. Right, right. So right. you get a lot of complaints. Like um, we have people on our team, and I'll tell you just a personal story. Uh, the uh, uh, ramp your voice, uh, Melissa Thompson. She's an advocate, and we have uh, Alice Wong from Divisibility, who told me they've been invited to speak on panels, and they're wheelchair bound, mm. and they don't even think to make sure that there's a ramp for them to get on the uh, stage. Mm -hmm. So she's had to sometimes wheel in front of the panel stage. So we were just like, you know, we're tired of hearing this. People haven't getting harassed at bathrooms. We was like, look, we can create an event that's just like the events you go to. We still have guests, we still have comic artists, but we want to look at the programming and talk about the topics people want to talk about. We want to have the uh, guests that people want to see and the people involved that people want to see. And that's exactly what we did. So. like uh, like one of my partners, Peter, always says, we're actually one of those businesses where if we go out of business because this becomes the norm, mm. we're good with that. Nice. Mm. But right, right now, right, right. That's awesome. but rather than wait for these other events to get where we are now, we just decide to put our pennies together, come together, and do it ourselves. Mm. And um, hopefully they'll all get there and there'll be no need for a Universal Fan Con. Mm. But until then, that's why we're here. So it's, it's real easy to see why people you know, trusted Robert, they trusted Jamie, they, they trusted this board of directors, if you will, with this, you know, this huge undertaking. Um, but if you go on internet and look around it and kind of get a better feel of things, there are articles out the wazoo about this whole situation. You kind of got a sense that they waited till the last possible moment. They wanted everything, everything in their body and their collective body wanted this to work and the money didn't allow it to work i'm gonna play a clip from a a guy that was directly involved in it in the actual convention here in a second but sometimes it's not just black or white you know people have painted them as crooks and, and, and robbers and you know if you go through and and do your own research you'll you'll see that you know they a lot of the things they said they did they did it just went left you know and it happens and you can also go on google and see all the other conventions it's happened too but their ideals and and the ambition they had and and their hopes and dreams and what they wanted fan con a universal fan con to be are admirable i i admire them for their effort although it wasn't uh the most experienced effort and you know they definitely should have thrown in a towel sooner I think as a community, we tend to bury each other. You know, we'll get behind each other. Yo, this is good, it's good. But when it doesn't work, we we have, there's this thing where we have to bury each other and point fingers and, you know, yes, figure out what went wrong, who could have done what better. If there is a crook somewhere, get them out of there. But if it's a group of people that tried and failed, you know, I feel like we gotta, we gotta take a different approach in the community in terms of uh, of helping get those people back up. You know, these were who we considered, you know, celebrities or, or leaders in the community. And if all we can do after they fail is stomp them down and laugh at them, we're just gonna stay right where we are, and especially in the black community. That is a problem. And that is probably a couple hundred videos from before another day, but in the geek culture community especially one that wants to be inclusive we definitely have to work on getting the right people in the right places which is easier said than done but also when we do fail and when it doesn't go the way we want to we have to be more understanding we have to be more encouraging we have to lift each other up and um this was crazy it was crazy what happened and and the the after the aftermath i was one of those people you know kind of like enjoying kind of the the chaos of it all like whoa what happened this is crazy yada 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 jamie brought next trying you know trying to <laughs> damage control it was all crazy but at the end of the day i still would have liked to have seen something like universal fan con succeed hey what's up everybody this is d um this um i wanted to hurry up and do this video um i wanted to actually originally put this on twitter but i know how twitter gets messy but it's probably going to upload over here anyway and all that yeah 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 um this is not me throwing nobody in a no bus this is not me trying to look like a hypocrite or anything this is not me doing all i'm doing damage control on my side 
because um, what went down with Universal FanCon, a lot of people are pissed, and hopefully a lot of people understand, especially since certain um, things have gone down. This is just basically my account and how it just turned, just went, you know. <laughs> basically what happened was um, when we first got approached to do FanCon, it was about almost a year and a half ago, we wanted to really be a part of it, so we became affiliates. I remember I told Chris, Chris, like, I already beat you two of my nigga, and we were on it, man, and um, since then, we did everything in our power to um, spread the, uh, the news around by Universal FanCon coming out. I remember we had that little show, um, little, we was on, um, we had a little radio show, it's on our YouTube page where you can see it in the corner, you see Universal FanCon, that was all, that was a full on year ago. Um, we pushed that name a lot, and I'm not even trying to say we did it better than anybody else, but I think we did it thoroughly, and we made sure people knew about the name. Um, we went to different cons, we did it, when we went to different, um, we saw different people and all that, we mentioned it, we put it on our website, went right before, even right before we even had promo codes to give, you know, a promo code or anything like that, we were saying people get your tickets here, all that, we went all out for it, like I'm sure plenty of other people did. Um, around about, uh, I want to say February, I can't really be sure, but uh, February, March-ish, uh, we got news that we didn't have enough money. Now, I will say this, I believe it, you know, despite Kickstarter money and all that, I believe it because all this, all this ish costs money. Now, the whole entire time, me and Chris have been making the suggestion, scale it back, scale it back, scale it back, and I'm not saying motherfuckers didn't listen to us, but I think motherfuckers didn't want to hear that and wanted to make it as big as possible. And Chris, who I told him feverishly, stop mentioning that, he kept on saying, well, you know, BlurCon did it even smaller, you know. I was like, stop, Chris, you don't have to mention that shit. But he made a point, just make it smaller. But whatever, um, everybody, they use the word hubris. No, y'all y'all just wanted to make it bigger. Y'all wanted to grandstand, whatever, because there was a lot going into this shit. Then we get another um, meeting where everybody, everybody was devastated because it's like, yo, nigga, this shit might not happen. And at that point, I was, there was, at that point, me personally, I was saying, and I said it twice, we're damned if we do, we're damned if we don't, go for it. Let's just tell the fans, well, we want to do this, well, we want to apologize, we want to do this, let's do a Kickstarter, let's just tell the truth. I'm fine with telling the truth. And several people said, let's just tell the truth. And they didn't do it, they did, you know, we thought it was on. Then last week, um, by, <laughs> by, the, by the attitude, everybody was... Chipper and like, oh shit, it would look about gloomy, but we might get this done. Shit done. All right, we're a week out. Um, our boy DJ Sue comes out from Japan. Oh my god, I love that nigga. That's my boy. Um, so glad he's home. He got to see his folks. Um, all good, man. I'm preparing several things. I wrote up a script for us to do several skits. I wrote up a I wrote up something for us to do uh, for FanCon and all that. I wrote up, and I was getting ready to write the whole thing down for a panel that was going to be at FanCon that Sunday. <sighs> Lo and behold, out of nowhere, it did it cancel. I'm like, get the fuck out of here. And we seen everything that went down. Basically, what happened was they just didn't have enough money. And truth be told, we didn't have enough money since probably February. Probably before that. Because you mean to tell me you drop we're 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 a few we're a month or so away outside of FanCon and you mean to tell me you're just now telling me we ain't got enough money? You're just now telling us? And it, it, it wasn't so much just a surprise where it was, okay, maybe we could work this shit. Maybe we can do this shit. And a lot of people, even including myself, was like, door sales is gonna save us. Door sales is gonna save us. And by seeing the swelling of people that are upset and truly, because I can tell the people who spent money already and people who spent time trying to promote this and people that just want to drink straight up tea, I can tell the difference already on Twitter or that. Because some people just like seeing, seeing a fucking a house burn. I don't blame you. House burning shit is fun. But you can tell some people that really like, yo, how could you? We got letters from, we got motherfucking, oh, not letters, we got DMs and fucking, um, Messages from friends and fans we don't we never even freaking had saying what the fuck happened? What the fuck happened? 
And the response that Universal Con came out with, I gotta be real, I I did this. <laughs> what the fuck is that? And we got other people like, well, let's do this, let's do that, let's do this. And I'm saying it, and I'm not going to mention who they are. I won't because that's just stupid. That's petty as hell. Um, we had some people was like, well, y'all, look, we got to show solidarity. I'm like, yo, at this point, bro, this whole we got to have this, we got to have this set thing and all that. We got to have this set response. We got to have this. No, that's us not being transparent, and that's how we got into this fucking situation anyway. Now, I'm, I could be mad saying, well, they didn't listen to the little, the smaller affiliates. I can get mad and say, well, they knew they couldn't do this and they just went ahead and went anyway. They, they, basically what happened was, and they said it, and I think um, even Jamie said it, she said that transparency fucked us over and we didn't want our truth. We should have been. And nobody approached me to say, hey, these and all. I just said, and they said they can do it. They can't even do it because of that hand. I, because at that point, I ain't touch no money. Now I know a lot of people want to know because we want to see heads rolling shit. Like who was in charge of the money? Who was in charge of this? Who was in charge of that? I I have not seen no names because that would be just irresponsible of me to say that. But there are probably one or two people I got my eyes on. You know, just but it, that's just me. Just suspecting shit and that's just suspecting you don't need to know who they are who what they doing i know one name has came out and he's another motherfucker where it's like you know <laughs> so so because because even a couple months back i was like you know I, I don't know but so basically what happened of all that shit everybody everybody's devastated a lot of people like we we feel it too i feel it on two different ends man my best friend is here and we have no con. We got to go to that pop-up. We're going to that pop-up that's over there. I think it's called Win Con, Comic Con or whatever. W-I-N Comic Con. It's going to be at the um, old, um, what is that, the old Under Armour building. <laughs> I know that much. But um, we won't go to that, man, because, you know, I I think people deserve to go somewhere, man, after that fallout, because that fallout is terrible. And, Joe, I just... I don't know how to feel. I know a lot of people are sick. I'm sick myself about it. Only in the sense of I have a friend that's here and a friend that got caught in the in the whole crossfire of it all. You know what I mean? And that's just terrible, bro. That's just terrible. And you know what? I, I know a lot of people are like, hey, people's heads should roll all that. Look, that's going to come with the territory. And I'll be honest with you, when it comes to the people that are in charge, they're trustworthy. Um... They're trustworthy. They can be trusted. I seen the shit they went through. I seen the emotion they went through when this shit had to be dropped. Yes, it could have been done way better. Yes, it could have been fixed a long time ago. That's not going to fix the problem that's here now. Is that we got a lot of people that are either coming to Baltimore or can't cancel tickets or whatever. And a lot of money has been lost on both sides. Personally, I hope there could be some middle ground way. Not just refunds, but something. Can't go back to everybody else. Um, me personally, um, I'm pissed off. But for us three black geeks, man, uh, your part's like, oh, why you like that? Nigga, I woke up. Uh, <laughs> I woke up doing this shit. Um, but for three black geeks, um, we're going to go ahead and try our best to make something out of this, get more content for ourselves, you know, um, hit the ground running, but we always do. And um, we're still a weekly show. There's nothing lost out of us. So... That's my piece. I had to really get that off my chest. And if it, and it's just, and it wasn't like there was a lot. And it wasn't like I was going to name names and shit. But I had, to, for my sake, for my sake and for the sake of some people who probably know what went down, I had to say something. You know what I mean? I had to say something. I, you know, I don't know. Am I going to tea drink on, um, <laughs> I'm still tea, tea drink on Twitter? I, I got to be honest with you. The tea's kind of getting cold now and started to find bits of dead horse being beaten in the, inside said tea. So, I don't know if I'm going to keep on doing it. But as for that, um, thank you for watching. Um, we're going to have a whole lot of content coming out. We're going to have probably a riffing video. We're going to probably have us having another conversation again. And all the rest of that good mess. So, um, that's all. Um, talk to everybody later. So, in the end... Was it money? Was it poor planning? Was it, you know, 
lack of marketing depending on who you ask everybody's gonna say something different sounds like it was a little bit of everything and ultimately that whole voice inside of you whatever it is that says hey it's just not gonna work cut your losses yeah they 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 put that guy on mute and that's pretty much it um i will say that one of the positive things and i guess shows or demonstrations of resilience of our community was when you know universal fan con went under wimmy con and the pop-up con of 2018 you know took its place you know and people went to that instead so there was there was something there to you know feed the fans who who, who kind of got left out in the dark basically you know which is i'm sure people watching this to you you were like yeah but it still doesn't excuse the poor execution of universal fan con and i'm not making excuses for them um my whole understanding going into this thing was very foggy you know uh, i remember reading articles about maybe you know the board of directors were this was intentional like this, this was just a big con they they a, a cash grab i heard things about um, you know, one person making a cash grab and leaving everybody else in the dust to take the heat for it. You know, D made a sort of a and in a reference to maybe some of the people on staff not being as trustworthy as they should be. So none of us really know what happened uh, in the room where it happened, supposedly, but like in the worst way possible. <laughs> Uh, but it's very interesting. It's a very interesting failure. Um, and I think a lot of us can learn from this because I know we put on events. And I know people we collaborate with and some of our friends put on events as well. And sometimes you can't learn everything from the successes. You know, sometimes failures can be the best teacher. And uh, I wish the best to Robert and, and Jamie and all those people who are involved in that. Hopefully, you know, they, they don't this doesn't keep them in debt for the next 10 15 years however much money they put into it i know they had pretty good jobs outside of you know what they did for the community but still man it doesn't matter who you are you know one of the guys that was involved in this i had filed for bankruptcy in another event he was in and that's a whole nother story but i want to thank you guys for watching the video today uh before you go please hit the like button and the subscribe button share us around the internet tell your friends tell your family the safe space is here to stay. And uh, I'm Desmond Childs. Thank you for watching.